I'm here with Eric Bergloff, who's the Chief Economist of the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, which is meeting here in Istanbul and has just published its forecasts for the region. Eric, I noticed you turned quite a lot gloomier about the outlook for these Central Eastern European countries, Asian countries. Why is that? Well, it is basically a story of three countries, the three big economies. It's about Russia, it's about Turkey, it's about Poland. All right, tell us about Russia first of all. Yeah. Big slowdown there, I see. A very, very big slowdown, and, and it's part of a longer trend. It's partly supply, a very uh, high capacity utilization in the economy. It's partly demand. It's about uh, global energy. Yeah. yeah. And what about um, Poland then and Turkey? Well, Turkey is a special case, I think, because Turkey was overheated, had deliberately tried to slow down the economy. It's been successful. It's a soft landing. It's not a completely balanced landing, but it's a soft landing. Okay, and Poland? Poland is a story of they're doing very well throughout the crisis, using the fiscal space very uh, cleverly. Of course, now it's suffering because there's no more fiscal space. Uh, e uh, Eurozone is weighing down on its exports. That's I mean, the story before, of course, was the Eurozone crisis, your neighbours causing all sorts of troubles. Now the Eurozone crisis is receding a bit, but we don't seem to be getting any pickup. Well, there are, of course, some delays here also, because, for example, in Poland's case, it did suffer, of course, from the loss of exports to the Eurozone. It used its fiscal space to stimulate the economy. They have no more space. So this, there's a delay here in the effect. Okay, should they be doing more fiscal stimulus? No, I think they cannot. They are hitting their limits. But across the region? Across the region, unfortunately, most countries don't have that luxury. I think what they really need is structural reform, trying to continue the reforms that they started so excellently, you know, two decades ago. But the last five years, we haven't seen much progress on structural reform. We should talk a little bit about uh, North Africa, where the EBRD has started lending recently. What's the story there? It's a different situation. It's uh, about uh, instability, political instability, leading over into macroeconomic instability. So a lot of uncertainty. Investors are watching on the sidelines. A very difficult situation. A lot of people looking at um, your sorts of countries from around the world used to this being a sort of a growth region, a, a source of uh, optimism in Europe. Has that changed? Well, I think long term there is plenty of convergence growth yet to be had. They are still much below in terms of, of levels of income. But for the moment, they are suffering as the rest of Europe is suffering. Okay, I have to ask one last question about Slovenia, which is in big trouble, deep recession you're forecasting. Is it going to need an international bailout? I think the, the government now is set on doing it on its own. It announced today a program that I think does achieve a lot. The question is, of course, in the long term, whether they will be able to do this on their own. They need structural reform more than almost any other country in, in Southeast Europe. It's a, a long agenda of uh, breaking uh, related lending between the banking sector, corporate sector, less state involvement. The next Cyprus? No, I don't think it's the next Cyprus, but it has its problems. It needs to address those problems. Mr. Bergloff, thank you very much.